Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Spragans, and I am your sister in Christ. Welcome to Bible study for super newbies. It is December. It is already December. I mean, where did the time go, right? <laughs> Today we are talking about Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, on pages 2052 to 2054 in our Life Application Study Bible NIV. So yesterday we talked about how we're all part of one body. All Christians, all believers, we're all a piece of the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ is not a church. The church is not a location. All of these things means a group of people. That's what it's describing. Christians as a whole, as a community. So how do we become contributing members of that? When you're super brand new, or you're just starting to figure things out, you're, you're not really confident that you're living as a good Christian or that you know enough to live as an effective member of the body of Christ, right? Or of the church, which means the people, the people, the believers. So how do you give? How do you commit to that? Even when you're brand new and there's still so much you have to learn. Well, Paul was talking to the Ephesians and he was telling them how to do this. And he says, Paul says, to live a life worthy of the calling we've received. And that might be a little bit itchy for you. You might not understand what that means. But when you accept that gift of freedom from slavery to, to sin, when you accept that gift of salvation, that you are saved from damnation, right? The damnation of sin, that sin dies with the body. All right, we won't go back over that, but I'm just saying, when you accept that gift and you finally get it, and you wanna give, because that's what we're supposed to do. Paul says to live a life of the calling we've received, which is to be a part of the body of Christ, a part of the church as a body of people, right? So how do you do that? Well, he starts off by saying that we accept and love other Christians, even ones who uh, who are still messing up a little bit, even ones who are uh, who are doing things a little differently, and you might not agree with them. What they're doing doesn't decide your actions. Your actions as a Christian are to love them and accept them as a part of the body. Right. And, and to speak with love, to speak the truth with love. So it's okay to not agree with other Christians who might not quite be getting things right. And we see this everywhere we go. But the way that you speak to them is of love. And you speak the truth. You, you don't have to agree with people who are not quite getting things right in order to show them love. You speak the truth with love. Paul also talks about how we are meant to use our gifts to build the church. Now, God has called on us to grow disciples in every nation. So that means as we are a part of the body, right, the everlasting light and the truth and the love that is Jesus Christ, we are meant to share all of what we're learning and all of what we know with people who don't. Because how would people know how much God and the love of God and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is affecting us unless we tell them, unless we show them. So another, another uh, thing that Paul's talking about is to live a life worthy of the calling we've received because sometimes people will never speak to you. Sometimes you may never meet people, but they are watching. People are watching you and they are watching how what you've chosen as a follower of Jesus Christ, as a Christian, how that's changing you, how that's changing your attitude towards the world, how that's changing your behavior in your own life, how that is changing your presence in your community and in the awareness of people around you. People watch you. People are listening to you, even if they don't say they are. So to live a life that speaks of these changes that you are making, either in your heart or in your mind or outward, to 
do that. But he says, don't try to, uh, to live Christian life alone. It is really, really hard to achieve what God wants you to achieve as a Christian, as a member of service for the community, if you try to do it by yourself. The whole reason we are part of the body of Christ, right? The collection of people, Christians, we are part of the body. Christ is the head and we are all part of the body is so we can accomplish together what each person separate cannot achieve. So to find a church, to find a group of believers, to find uh, people who can support you when you don't have the ability or the knowledge or the energy to do what you are meant to do, these people will help you. The Holy Spirit will work through people, other believers, to to fill in the pieces that might be missing that you haven't quite developed yet. And that's amazing. Because when we say that you are never alone in Christ, you are truly never alone. You are never alone. You've got this Holy Spirit. He's such a fun guy. But keep in mind, every one of us has the Holy Spirit. So if you're in a place where you're, you're being attacked or being separated from your faith, being around other people who are marked with the Holy Spirit, their Holy Spirit is going to talk to you too. <laughs> it's so great. So you're never alone. You're never alone. And Paul wants us to be aware that even though we have these other Christian influences, to decide with discernment whether or not their ideas are leading you closer to Christ or are leading you farther away. And how do we know with discernment. What do we use as discernment? We use the scripture. If you ever have questions about whether instructions or advice is good for you in Christ's life, look it up. All of the answers you ever need for anything is in here. It is in here. All of it. Or speak to uh, speak to a, a church leader. Um, talk to other Christians. But everything that is meant to bring you closer and grow as a Christian is in this book. And by book, I mean the Holy Bible. I happen to understand this one the best. This one happens to help me grow the best. So always be careful with advice or ideas that other people bring into your world. Because not all of them are going to be good. Most of them, if they're from other Christians, might be well-intentioned. But some of them are sneaky out there. But people always... um, don't be afraid of, of that sin when you make mistakes that it's going to destroy your ability to keep witnessing. None of us are perfect. All of us are going to continue to sin in one way or another, whether it be physical or mental or with our, our service. But that doesn't mean that you still can't be an incredibly powerful witness for the love of God and keep helping people to find the love of God and salvation. Every Christian, whether brand new, whether lapsed, or whether actively wonderful in in service, all of us, it is our obligation and our duty to help other people see why we've chosen this life. So it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of work to do on yourself. It is still a gift that we are called to give to the world and unbelievers to help them see, even the mistakes. Because there are people out there who are still living deep, dark, awful traps, awful, awful prisons of sin that don't believe that they can be forgiven. I was one of them. For decades, I avoided God. I avoided accepting Christ because I thought my decisions were so bad There is no way that God would love me. And there are other people out there who feel that way. So if you make mistakes, allow it to be seen. Don't don't deny them. Share them with people. And share how you are still saved. Even when you screw up, you are still a saved person. And tell people this. Right? Sometimes we... uh, we have, we have some questions, but we rely on God's Spirit, on the Holy Spirit, to renew us from the inside out. So even though we still make mistakes, and some of them are pretty bad, 
Some of the mistakes we make after being saved are pretty bad, and we could be deeply ashamed of those. But to pray, pray to God, pray to the Holy Spirit to use you, to change you from the inside out. Even if this takes a while, it will still happen. To have faith. Brothers and sisters, that's it for today. That's our Bible study for today. So happy December. And with much love, I will wish you all a wonderful day. God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow.